It takes one wrong email for an entire deal to fall apart. Allow me to share the story. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is 9.30 in the morning. I think it's a Tuesday. We have a closing today and we have a huge problem. Just kidding, it's not a big problem, but it's a problem nonetheless. Every time there's a closing, there's always something, something that goes wrong that isn't right, that needs to be fixed, this, that, and the other, right? Because you can't get everything perfect. This time, it's the garage door. Basically what happened is the lobby access to the garage door is broken and the garage remote doesn't work. So we gotta figure out a way to basically, here, let me show you. See right here? Broke. So I can't get into the garage. So we have to figure out another way, which is why I have this. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. Got, I got a little bit messy. You know, my knees are, as you can see, my pants are a little ruined, but we got in, we got what we needed, and now we're getting out of here. We gotta hit the closing, it's supposed to be at 10 a.m. I'm not necessarily in a rush because I'm on the sell side, so we have nothing to do. I have nobody to meet. I'm just there to drop off keys and this little coupon book that we're supposed to drop off. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. We've actually had a closing here just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, they're really stingy on who can come in and who cannot. So we're going to wing it. It's over. We got paid. I got, oh, we're not going to go through this mud again. No, sir. But yeah, basically it's over. We got closed, it was pretty smooth. The buyer asked me a few questions, I was prepared and uh, locked and loaded. Let's go get paid, process this check, and then go spend it. Here's what we got going on for today. Obviously we're gonna go to the office, we're gonna make some cold calls, and we also have to set up a meeting today with a seller of mine. All right, people, we are back in the office. It is 11.15 a.m., so now we're gonna get some cold calls out the way, 20 contacts, that's the goal. And the closing for today, that was a circle prospecting lead I called last May. So May, no, April of 2019, I'll call this lady. She said, yeah, I might do something next year. I checked in with her on January. She said, yep, call me in March. Bada boom, bada bing. We got a listing and then sold it. So, Great news. And it wouldn't be a normal day if I didn't forget something in my car, like my coffee. So now let's go back inside and get straight to work. I forgot to mention, we have to find time to edit and post a vlog today. And it's go time, it is 12, 14 p.m. It's a little late, but I've queued up a list of, right now we have 56 households, and uh, we're calling a very specific neighborhood where pretty much two houses went under contract, one for 950,000, the other for 1.9 million. So uh, you could say it's the kind of properties I enjoy selling. <laughs> we ready, we ready. A little bit nervous this morning, my friend. A little bit nervous. Hi there, is this Leslie? Hello, ma'am. My name is Aram. I'm a real estate agent with Remax. Did I catch you at a bad time? No worries, you have a great day, ma'am. Here's the thing, when you say, like when I call, right? Hi, is this Frank? Hey, it's Frank. Hey Frank, it's Aaron Remax first, that I catch you at a bad time, right? If they say yes, I'm just gonna reply with, okay, I'll be super quick. If they say no, then I know that that's a conversation I can expand on a little bit further. Damn, how good is my hair this morning? Ooh -wee. So I've been calling for 10 minutes and I've had one person pick up the phone and say they're not interested. So one of my fellow subscribers mentioned to me earlier that I'm doing too much of an upswing when I ask my second question, did I catch you at a bad time? So I'm going to focus, and it's right on the money, because I do come up, I can't control my voice that well. So I'm gonna try to control it the way I'm coming down with like a, like a downswing when I say, is this a bad time? So we'll see how that works. Hello, is this Mr. Lis uh, Lisai? My name is Aram, I'm a real estate agent with Remax. Is this a bad time? Okay, excellent. I'll be super quick anyway. I was just calling because a couple houses went under contract over the weekend in the neighborhood, and I wanted to see if you had any plans. Uh, in Burr Ridge, on Burr Ridge Club Drive, does that ring any bells? Oh, oh music to my ears. <laughs> no, I joke, but yeah, it's basically the one, uh, one sold for, not sold, went under contract at 950, the other one was 1.9 million. So wanna let you know and see if you had any plans in moving any of your properties at all. So the one is, uh, the one for 1 1.9 was uh, 1003 Burridge Club Drive and uh, 950 was uh, 1206. Yeah. Do 
Do you have any plans in the coming future, maybe one to five years from now? I don't, but I do have a huge network. I'm kind of uh, semi-famous on YouTube, so I do have a lot of agents uh, that I know from Florida I can help you out, but I can sell your properties here. Sam, I mean, I really appreciate that, sir. Uh, would you prefer I email it or text it to you? I don't know if this is a landline. Okay, what's your email? Perfecto. I'll send you uh, all my information. I actually just did a house tour for a Burridge home. So I'll send you that link and then you can click through my channel, look at some of the other videos you have there. Okay? Excellent. Thank you, John. Bye bye. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we got ourselves a good prospect. Woo! So it's pretty much 2 p.m. and I have reached my 20 contacts. However, there's still about seven, five people on this list. I'm gonna finish calling it. You can join me for the final phone call and then we'll, uh, we'll get to the rest of the day. Hello there, is this uh, Mrs. Ludmark? That lady was very rude, but that's okay. You just hang up and you move on. Okay, this is the progress report for today. We dialed for an hour and 37 minutes. We have uh, 21 contacts and we had to call 113 houses. That's 119 phone numbers. Now, the hard part is done. What I have to do is call my seller, set up a time to meet with him because first things first, he owes me money. <laughs> I covered his landscaping cost, so he's gotta pay me back. And uh, actually, I'm gonna give him a little bit of a discount. I told him it was 45. Then the landscaper charged me an extra 35 for cleaning the grass. Not gonna tell him about that. We'll just get the 45, we'll be happy. And then I have to let him know that we have to do a price adjustment because clearly the price that we have isn't gonna work, right? So we're gonna sit down. He's not gonna be happy. I'm probably not gonna be happy. But the good thing is the, uh, the listing is gonna expire July 1st. We've been getting a lot of traffic on this listing, but just not enough offers because the buyers we're attracting are not the buyers we need because the price point isn't quite right. It needs a lot of work. I'm gonna meet with them. It's gonna be an awkward conversation, but that's what part of real estate is. You know, sometimes you have to have awkward conversations. And to be honest, I've been procrastinating about this phone call for a while. I should have called him last week, but I didn't. And he called me yesterday for, a, for an update. I told him, look, let's just meet in person tomorrow and discuss it. It takes one wrong email for an entire deal to fall apart. Allow me to share the story. So I have a deal that is scheduled to close middle of July. It's a, what we call an FHA single unit approval. So it's a new thing that came out that if, you know, some condo unit, uh, actually a majority of 50% of condo boards do not allow FHA loans, right? Or they don't qualify. However, with single unit approval, now 100% of them can qualify as long as they meet like two requirements, which is more than eight units and less than 50% of it being rented out, right? So it's pretty easy. So that's the kind of loan we're doing and these things take time. It takes a few weeks for the approvals to come in, get the HOA documents. And this morning I get a phone call from the, our attorney, I'm the list site, so the listing attorney reaches out. Hey, the, the sellers, my client is extremely frustrated with the extension request. So I wanna get a hold of you, see what's going on, this, and the other. I'm like frustrated, I, just, I talked to him a week ago. He seems fine, but whatever. Let me get involved, let me, let me check in, right? So I called the other agent, the buyer's agent. They're like, you know, you guys are giving us this attitude about the extension request. You knew about this from the beginning, yada, yada, yada. Here's the problem we're facing. The HOA didn't get us the documents in time. It's not our fault. I'm like, okay, well, nobody's upset. <laughs> so uh, what's going on? So I got to the bottom of it. It was literally, literally an issue of the HOA didn't get their job done in time, right? It wasn't the buyer's fault. It isn't the seller's fault. So I'm like, okay, no worries. I'm like, don't worry about it. I told the buyer's agent, I'm like, don't worry about it. I'll call my client, I'll explain it. It's not gonna be an issue. Assume your extension request is granted. So don't even worry about it, proceed. I call my client, assuming he's upset. And I'm like, hey, I'm being told that you're extremely frustrated with what's going on with the extension request. I wanted to give you an update. He's like, who said I'm frustrated? <laughs> he's not upset at all. So while I'm expecting this like heated conversation, he's just like, okay, makes sense. because. 
you know, uh, I know the client, he's a very reasonable guy. I said, look, the HOA just got him the information today. We gotta give him some more time. He said, okay, no problem. It was crazy. So just maybe one email saying, is, this is a second extension request, leads to somebody saying they're frustrated, this, that, and the other, and emails back and forth, leads to chaos. So that's important. That's why it's very, very important if you're an agent, once a week, get involved, get in touch with people, and let everybody know what's going on. That way there is no misinformation or anything like that causing problems. Now I made a mistake. Last week I should have reached out to the buyer's agent to see what's going on. I didn't, which is what's led us to the situation today, right? So lesson learned, but the deal is saved. Everything's gonna be okay. Okay, so it's almost three o'clock. I think it's 2.40. Uh, it's time to take a little bit of a lunch break, eat some wings. And then at four o'clock, we're gonna go meet with the seller, have that little tough conversation, and then come back to the office, probably do a little bit of follow-up. And then I'm going to, the, there's a new Top Golf that opened up in my house. So a, a good friend and client of mine, along with somebody else, we're going to go hit some golf balls. Okay, we are in the car. We are on our way to the client's house. And these are moments I do not look forward to as a real estate agent, but you have to do them. You know, you have to put yourself in these positions because as an agent, we have to have uncomfortable conversations. I am out of the house. It was a very successful meeting. It was not as confrontational as I initially expected. So I guess it just goes to show, you know, when you when you reason with somebody, it just makes a lot more sense. I didn't tell them we have to lower the price. I just said, look, you have a couple of options. Let me lay them on the table for you, okay? We're getting a lot of activity. We're not getting any bites. We have a few out. We can leave it the way it is and keep getting activity and no bites. Or if you want to force the issue, we can lower the price. And he said, well, what do you want to lower it to? 175? I said, no, I need 170. He said, that's fine with me. So I'm going to go, uh, go to the office, grab the paperwork I need. And tomorrow I'll stop by to get the authorization to actually lower the price. And with real estate, every time you're going to mess with the price, you actually need written approval from the seller himself so that's why i have to come back tomorrow it is currently 4 50. i was in there for pretty much 45 minutes we talked real estate for maybe 10 minutes the rest was just you know having a conversation they're an old couple so you know having companies is a rare occurrence so if something i can do to brighten their day i'm happy to do it so we're all gonna get old ladies and gentlemen so enjoy the life you have today because it won't be here in 50 years we are back in the office right now what i'm gonna do is i have i think two follow-up phone calls that i did not do last week i'm gonna get those out the way right now i need my phone for it and then we're gonna take care of this check reach out to the landscaper again schedule another haircut <laughs> just had to change real quick now i'm headed over to top golf and that will conclude the vlog for today and i will end with this ladies and gentlemen every time you have a closing it is extremely important to get a testimonial. And I usually, what I do is whenever the deal is done, closed, we're saying our goodbyes, I say, hey, can you do me a huge favor uh, and leave a review for, with your experience of uh, how I was working with me on, and I'll send you the link to where to do it. Now, like, yeah, yeah, no, and I've never had anybody say no. So that's the best time to get testimonials. And you cannot forget about them because that's how other clients can get to know you better, vet you out and uh, that way you get more business from it. So for me right now, I've been using a lot of Google. I have a bunch of reviews on Yelp, they're a waste of time. I have a few reviews on uh, Facebook, which is great, but I think Google Business is gonna be the best place for the reviews to go. So that's where I'm sending all of my clients and it's working out pretty good so far. That being said, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the vlog, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you next week with another vlog. Take care.